welcome. We did you welcome, John Clouser, Johnny Metal, the Metal Dad, coming to you from my music corner of the world. We got my faithful co-captain, John the Music Nut, flashing the five count uh, symbol for us. John, how we doing, my friend? Blood stained hands, blood stained times, blood stained weapons, blood stained lies. How are you? I'm Ooh. well. Oh boy. Welcome, Jake. And then, yes, we've talked about him. We haven't seen him since Wasp Wednesday. Jake from Jake, not from State Farm. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having Man. me, guys. Dude, it's glad it, I, it is great to have you I on the you. year of on the year of the priest. Uh episode, I believe this is number 16. And let's just take a look at this little pixelated mess that we have called the jugulator album cover i don't know about anybody else but boy i remember seeing this in 1997 and i thought wow that's why is that so pixelated it's like man that's just when when you get to look at let me here let me just pull it maybe on my phone it'll be a little bit better to yes the inside, yes which is yeah. much better <laughs> <laughs> much much better yeah look at that much look, better look at this beautiful thing i mm -hmm. mean i mean mark williamson or yeah mark williamson just did or mark wilkinson rather i mean he just what a beautiful cover and they reduce it to this but i know jake said he has a story about that but we'll get we'll get to that in just a second um so yeah we have a long time in between priest albums here long time we have you know we had the big tour in 1990 you know 1990 90 91 uh the last date of the painkiller tour rob has a little bit of a uh on stage accident with the with the harley davidson motorcycle and yeah they just never did after that there was already kind of known that there was going to probably be a little break from each other and they just never got back in touch you know rob sends this little fax out to uh to bill kirbishley and jane ed andrews the management of the band saying hey i just want to take a break i'll look to reconvene well they kind of took that out of context and they said well it, it, you know you're nuts for leaving the band blah 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 so that distances the band for quite a long period of time so at this point rob would release uh at least two fight albums and let's see two doesn't come out until after jugulator right oh so, uh so we have that uh glenn releases a solo album baptism under fire which by fire or by fire rather excuse thank you and uh oh. but i don't remember that being all that good <laughs> uh i think i had a, i listened to it maybe once or twice way back in the day and i didn't remember didn't think much of it so they go on a search and um if anybody's seen the movie Rockstar, you kind of get the gist. You know, they get a tape from somebody Scott knew uh, saying, hey, let's check out this guy named Tim Owens. Oh. Rest is history. He he could pull off the he could pull off Rob's chops, but he had enough chops of his own to throw in there. How did he get the Ripper name? They said, you're going to you're going to rip this to shreds, basically. And that's how it's he that's how he got the name. So he got that's how he gets the, the Ripper Owens uh nickname. So recorded during 1996, 1997 in Silvermere Studios in Surrey, England. We have 58 minutes and six seconds of just absolute bludgeoning to your face kind of kind of metal here on this on this particular album uh glenn tipton main producer kk also kind of uh does a little bit of producing so, uh, sean lynch uh also thrown in there mark wilkinson of course color color uh cover illustration let's look at the charts real quick austria uh number 34 canada where uh metal roger and mike ladano are uh peaked at number 87 finished charts number 24 uh, German charts, German and Japanese charts. This went to number nine. So this did really well in Germany and Japan. Cool. Um, Spanish album charts, number 20. 
Swedish charts, number 33. Swiss charts, number 43. U, uh, UK indie albums, 32. UK rock and metal albums, 14. And the Billboard US 200 peaked at 82. So much lower than the previous albums. Uh, we do get a couple singles, uh, Burn in Hell and uh, Bullet Train. Uh, released on a smaller label, uh, SPV. Uh, a lot of folks will notice you don't see this on streaming services. Uh, you know, SPV unfortunately goes under. Who knows who holds the rights to that thing? <laughs> right. So you're probably probably not one you're going to get to see on uh, on on um, um, on streaming services. So, um, with that said, Jake, first of all, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while. It has. So let's hear. First off, we're going to let you let's hear your Judas Priest intro story. Your your Judas Priest point of entry, as it were. Okay. And then we will let you uh, go on in. And let's let's hear your your take on Jugulator. My Judas Priest entry story is like most people. I, you don't know when you found out about Looney Tunes. I don't know when I first heard Judas Priest because I grew up listening to this, this point of entry, which I don't have on CD. This. And this, my dad liked Judas Priest. But by after this one, he already had one kid on the way. So he stopped buying music. So I didn't hear anything after that until, what was it? When was it? Bride of Chucky. When that was what? I was in fifth grade when I heard, saw Bride of Chucky and they had blood stained on there. Okay. And I remember that was... I didn't know that was Judas Priest at the time. And then in 2001, when I was 11, I was at a buddy's place and his older sister, we would play games late at night and his sister and listened to music and his sister's like, you guys got to check this out, check this out. And she put in this. And I was like, just blown away. It was, it, it, it blew my mind absolutely blew my mind at the time i was listening to megadeth god smack slipknot you know i had a real even like some pink and and yeah i was listening to like a whole wide gambit of everything so it was it was but that blew my mind um and then she played this one and this one all in one night so i got the whole kind of experience Ooh. And this was the nice. first time I heard anything from Painkiller, Stained Class, you know, Defend our Turbo, and, you know, anything like that. Anything was Ripper singing it on this live album. And so, yeah, that was that was kind of where it all started for me, was this. Now, I hadn't listened to this prior to being asked to come on here with you guys to this for since 2015 or 16. I don't think it's aged as well as I remember when I was 11 years old. Um, Some albums have that tendency to do that, unfortunately. You know, <laughs> when you're an 11 year old, it has that uh, the ultra violence. You're like, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you I guess you take your Judas Priest cheese how you want it. Do you want the sex, drugs and rock and roll of Turbo or do you want the ultra violence of a jugulator here? That's a good that's a great description. Right. Um, I prefer the uh, ultra violence of Jugulator. I I don't know if I can do uh, rock you all around the world again. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of distortion. There's no no guitar work that's really like sticks out, and you're like that solo just you know oh wow this guitar work I remember this now. That was the first thing I noticed this time around. Um, but the other thing that you do notice right out the gate. This is the first time since I think Love Bites that you can actually hear Ian Hill's bass, which is actually pretty impressive. Like, and he's playing a, a Spectre, I believe, NS2 five string. And Ian usually plays a narrower neck Spectre four string because he's got really small hands. And so he usually got a narrower neck. And with that five string, you got a thicker neck on there. So 
that's that I, I really like hearing the I'm a bass guy. I just I absolutely loved hearing the bass in here. Um, but that's still not enough to give it a, a better rating, I don't think, for me. Um, but it opens with jugulator, and you got they got really creative with the sound effects on here. You got like I call them the jugulator bells right out of the gate. That um just going right out of the gate, and it just it. And then you greeted with these just distorted guitars and Ripper just he he goes all out on this song and he does this throughout the whole album where he I feel like someone should have said you we don't need to see everything you can do in each song like he does he, he growls screams grunts you know he does these really operatic like church choir singing and stuff and he'll do all of that and several songs it almost becomes tedious like a chore to listen to in one song and i, I jugulator has that feel of you know like the sentinel and painkiller where it's kind of their creature feature where this is our guy of the album and he's coming to get you kind of um but i don't feel like it's as memorable as like the sentinel or painkiller like if, if you're holding the painkiller and uh sentinel up here i feel like jugulators kind of you know down here it's just it's not memorable uh let's see here what's next on the album you've got after that it's uh bloodstained yeah and i would that's a decent track i mean it's got solid bass and rhythm in there but it's it's just i feel like that one was more of the same just that heavy distorted guitar um just almost the, the lyrics are almost again it's that ultra violence just and you get that whole repetitive thing where on the previous album you had a wide range of subjects this is just almost constant like in your face ultra violence kill 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 when you're 11 oh you love that you oh, this is what you're all about you know oh yeah <laughs> and all, i'm like Unless I'm working out, I really don't think I want to hear this all the time. It's it's such a chore sometimes. Um, you know, it's just it, it really got to be a lot. Um, dead meat opens with this dog growl thing, and I have some notes here on this one. This one really felt like a chore because I felt like Tim really went all out on here with his vocals. Um, I. After one or two listens, this one was one I just found myself skipping was Dead Meat. It really, really felt hard to get through. Um, again, as an 11-year-old, I, oh, yeah, this is awesome. This is great. But I don't really remember any of the guitar work in there. And when you think of Judas Priest, you think of you want, think of guitar work, the, the guitars. And there's nothing in there that makes you go, that guitar work was great. That, you know... The, the vocal performances are, you know, so over the top. And it, again, Tim's doing everything in one song. And it just, maybe someone should have said, tone it down, do one or two things, like a low going into a high. But he's like, let's go here, here, here. here. And it, 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 it's a lot. And it, it was a lot, really kind of exhausting listening to this after six, seven years. It was, it was exhausting. And, and this is coming from a guy who listens to some really, really, you know, I listen to Lamb of God or Mudvayne or Slipknot here, but this just felt excessive at times. Um, and, you know, even Alice Cooper's Brutal Clown album, that's kind of got that heavy distortion. And I don't mind that, but that's not got that excessive, like, heaviness to it. Um, after Dead Meat, you've got Death Row. I actually do love Death Row. I think Death Row stands out a lot. Mm -hmm. That's that's a killer track. Um, it's almost like a play. Um, and Ripper does. I don't feel like his vocal performance is excessive. He almost does it like a play, like he's voice acting while he sings. I really loved his performance in this. But there again, you don't have anything really memorable with the um guitar parts really actually no you do i do have some notes this is one of the few songs where you do um i said here let's see here yeah you've got the like laser effects with their guitar where they make a sound kind of like 
the electric chair kind of with their guitar. This is one of the few songs that has something where you're like, okay, they're actually doing something with their guitars. It it was actually nice. Um, and then there was a siren. There were some siren effects with really crunchy, thick bass lines that would hammer in there. This song, I felt like they hammered it home. Um, and then the end of it was really, really like, it kind of has that fade out. Just it was decapitate. This one was another one. It had that almost it felt excessive now but the first time I remember hearing this I felt like it was you ever go in for surgery and when you're coming out and you feel like you're just exhausted and trying to lift your head but it takes too much effort <laughs> that's how this song felt to me the mm. first time I heard it I remember and that's how I feel listening to it today, but it feels even worse with Decapitate now. It's like, not a good way anymore. It's like, oh, this song just, you know, and then the way he sings, he's got that kind of a, there's an, like a, an effect with how he's singing through here. And again, you don't have anything really memorable about the guitars at all. And the first time I heard, heard it, absolutely, when you're 11, oh, this is the coolest thing I've ever heard. It's heavier than anything I think I've ever heard. It's just brutal. It's in your, you know, 11 year old, you're just like, oh. <laughs> but now it, it was, it was so excessive. Just, I, I really wish I had more good things to say about it, but I don't burn in hell. I think is the um, highlight on here. I really think this might be one of like two highlight songs on here. Absolute perfect. Um, it kind of opens with Tim singing that haunting thing. And then you have this, the guitars that kind of squeal in and Ian has these really chugging bass lines before Scott kicks in with the drums. And there's that part where um, he says, I'm still laughing. And you get, I think it's KK. Maybe one of you guys know where he squeals his guitar. Like it's laughing. That just seems something more like KK would do, but that just, and he's, he's got kind of his more Midwest wine playing. Ripper has this, he, he's from Akron, Ohio. And if you're from the Midwest, you kind of, and I am, and you, you Midwest guys have this whiny twang accent to our voice and you can hear it on full display in this song. And um, when you, as a kid, I heard it. And it, as an adult, I hear it even more. I'm like, Oh, this guy's definitely not a British guy, you know. Um, and they're just this song just goes hard, really, really hard. And I, I, I put this on. I think I listened to this song more than any other song on the album, except maybe one, except maybe one, um, this week. Because I, I listen to it throughout the week, and I don't like listen as you guys have gone through this year of the pre-series, I've listened to every album, and I'll, I'll listen to them, you know, in different spots. So, like, maybe it's a di mood thing. If I'm doing something different, it might hit differently or in a different sound system or something. And that one, no matter what I was doing, it hit all the right times. <laughs> um, brain Dead. Brain Dead musically i don't think it's anything really spectacular too much but i think the story it tells and maybe this is just me um is absolutely phenomenal you've got that car crash going and then you've got a guy that's stuck living inside the shell of his body people coming in and they, he can still and ripper even mentioned that the lyrics even mentioned that that People are coming in and still talking and he can hear them talking. Um, and there's this really neat part where you can hear the electrocardiogram, the heart machine, dee, 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 and it kind of leads into the guitar solos. This is another one where they do something interesting with the solos where they squeal the solos off of the electrocardiogram and then kind of flatline the guy off of that. I think that's the only other solos I truly remember on this whole album. And I listened to it like four or five times this week. But I, I musically, most of it, I wouldn't give much more than a seven. But lyrically, I think lyrically, it's a strong song and the content is pretty good. But again, I, I've worked healthcare. So I've worked with people 
in that sort of situation. So now we have abductors. This is the lyrical content is just excessively violent. <laughs> and the whole thing is turned up to 12. Like the distortion on the guitars, Ripper does everything you've heard him do on everything else, plus then some. And then even more. And then when you think the song's about to end, there's a spot in here. Where is it? I don't remember where it is. I think it's right around the time where he says, abductors, something, where, abductors will bleed in your mind. Abductors cutting inside. They come for you in the night. It kind of fades out like the song's going to end. The first time I heard, listened to this the, the, this week, I was like, oh God, thank God it's done. And then it kicks back in and you have to listen to more. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no, no, this was just excessive. This whole song is yeah. like an exercise in excessive what not to do with an album. I felt like. like I felt like everything bad on this album, this song encapsulates. I skipped this one after the first two tr listens. That said, though, I did listen to the live version on 98 Meltdown way better it doesn't feel like there's i don't think he can do all those vocal exercises uh live on that he did on the album bullet train is a fun song um that was also nominated for a grammy in 99 i found out i don't know who won the grammy i'm assuming probably you, you know i know it's metallica better than you oh okay i was gonna say it's probably a metallica song but they had, the they, they had to make up for Metallica for them losing to Jethro Tull. Okay. You know, it's funny because um, Jethro Tull had a cover that Wasp did. That's the only thing metal about Jethro Tull. Yep, Locomotive Breath, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah very good version of it, too. Mm -hmm. Um, I do like Bullet Train. Lyrically, it's nothing impressive. Like, the lyrics on this whole album, like, even the good songs... Are nowhere near up to par with like Rob Halford on a good day at all. Um, but I, I this song is a fun song. And then you come to, I don't think there's any debate. This is the crown jewel on the whole album. I think that I, I think you'd have to be smoking some pretty good stuff to uh, not realize this. And I I vividly remember how I felt the first time I saw that heard this. I was 11 years old. It was nine. It was 2001. It was like November. So 9-11 had just happened. And you read Ooh. through these lyrics. They have blown away the daylight. Hours we had left a legacy, a deadly aftermath. We cannot exist in this, the godforsaken land. As we spiral down into oblivion, breathing the fumes of fires that they, that whole, I remember just, you know, reliving that whole day as the lyrics played and i know it was the song came out in 97 but to me that's that's all i ever see whenever i hear this is flashbacks of that wow. watching the news feeds and everything to that um i do think that this song ripper gives everything that's excessive on the album they do on here but they do it right and they cram it into, what is it, 11 or 9 minutes? Like 9 minutes. or 10 minutes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ripper does these really good church choir vocals during the chorus. Really, really good church. And I don't know if we've ever heard Rob do something quite like that. Mm -hmm. Not up to and, this point. Mm -hmm. right? And it just, this whole song is top-tier Judas Priest. And I, I would give this song, if I had to rank it out of 10, it would get a 15. <laughs> um, it, it, it's that good. And even like the ending, how it ends with that explosion. It, it could, and if I had to rank the album, on a good day, I'd give it a 7.5. On a bad day, I'd give it a 6. I feel like it's a mood album. You know, you can't just like... When I was a kid, it was definitely getting a 10. Yeah, but twenty twenty four Jake, unfortunately, now is saying a six to a six to seven point five somewhere in that neighborhood. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. 
it's just like I said, there's so much excessiveness, and it just the guitar work just doesn't stand out to priest standards. Yeah. Very cool. Good. That's good stuff. That is Excellent. really good. I, I I love the nine eleven uh um uh reference for Cathedral Spire. That's great. Yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't think about it like that, but that that's that that's that's fantastic. No, good great stuff. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, John, go for it. Let's let's All see right. let's see what your take is on this baby. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. I first heard this in 1997. My friend Jared had it. And he let me borrow it. I didn't like the album. Fast forward 2020. We can't go out. This time, I'm buying more music than I've ever bought in my life. Because I, I'm like, I'm going to discover more stuff. And I'm going to fill in my gaps. So I didn't have this. And one of the reasons I didn't have this is because it was so hard to find. And when you could find it, it'd be $50 used. Oof. But fortunately, I found someone on eBay whose name escapes me now, where I was able to find this album and a follow-up demo demolition, $36 for both of them, brand new with the shipping. So patience worked out. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> I'm glad I bought it. Because I like this album now. It's not top tier priest, but this grew on me over the years. This really grew on to me. To me, I listen to this album and I think to myself, can I hear Rob Halford singing some of these songs? And to me, it's yes. Because to me, it's a natural progression from Painkiller because we're getting heavier. We're not thrash like we were on a lot of the songs on Painkiller, but we're just becoming a heavier band. Now, as Jake alluded to, the guitar solos, not, not much stands out here. If you want those great guitar solos or that great guitar interplay that you had with KK and Glenn, you're going to find very little of it here. What you do have is cool riffs. Now, also, as Jake indicated, um, Ripper is doing a lot of different things with his voice. But with me, I appreciate it because what I don't like about the later albums, but the KK Priest albums, KK's Priest albums, is I think now Ripper oversings. We're here. He's going high way too much to the point where it's a distraction. But here, I enjoy what he's doing. Because he's he's bringing in those different voices, but it matches the mood of the song. So that I like. The lyrics, yes, Rob is missed. Glenn's writing, Glenn's writing the lyrics now, I believe. Um, not to say. But I like it. Jugulator, we got that slow industrial type burn before it kicks in. We got that double bass goodness from Scott Travis. Cool tune, but the solos are more noisy. You're not going to forget Painkiller after this. It's a decent opener. Bloodstain kills. Heavy as sin. Song about war. This song that I was reciting the lyrics to when we first started. I think this has a good bridge on it. Kick-ass chorus. This song, I think, is good. It's heavy. Dead Meat. This is cool, cool, but it's that pre-chorus that and the cool riff that makes it a good song. Not a great one, but I like it. There is this one part after one of the solos, I believe, that they take the tempo down to halftime, and they do that for a half a verse before picking it back up again. I think that's pretty neat. That's cool. Death Row. Yep, I'm with Jake. Death Row kills. Kills. Cool chorus, wicked riff. I love the way it starts with the conversation and the phone ringing and the, and the talking while that riff is playing in the background and it sounds like a spaceship is landing and it goes into that wicked riff and it kills. Good stuff. Decapitate. This was a song I always 
kind of mocked when I first heard this album. D capote. Now I dig it. Slow, menacing, Sabbath like riff. Here's another thing I really hear on this album. There are times when Ripper goes into a lower register. He sounds a little like Lane Staley from Alice in Chains. And maybe there's some other singers out there that that time that he sounds similar to, but that's what I pick up on. So Decapitate, it's cool. It's not one of my favorite songs, but I like it. Burn in Hell, again, I like Burn in Hell too. I think it's a little long, but it takes a while to get going, but it is killer. I love that chorus. Have you got a gun? Do you remember? Well, it is cool. Cool riff on here. And it, it's got this slow burn. It's a little long, long slow burn, but it's a cool track. Brain Dead, love it for the same reason Jake does. Um, musically, it's decent. The story is what brings me in. And those sound effects and the EKG beeping there. That is really cool. A very creative track for Judas Priest. They weren't doing songs like this with Rob. So you, you got to admire what they did here. This is a cool tune. Abductors is probably my least favorite track, although I do like when um, Ripper will go in a low ver, uh, lower register during one part of verse and then sing the next part in the higher register. I think that's cool. And I agree with, and we'll get into this a little bit, but the versions on here, there's five songs on here from Jugulator, Kill. We're not going to do a show on this, Al. But I will tell you, this is a kick-ass live album. Ripper shines like the sun here. Ripper's adding lyrics to rapid fire, for starters. Some of us. And one thing about this album, and you'll see this in the liner notes too, the crowd is rabid, involved, singing the lyrics, the choruses to the new songs. It is killer. And they said the everything here is live, except for they wanted it to sound like a complete concert experience. So they did edit some of the volume on the audiences. So that's the only thing that is the only thing that's edited. Killer app, killer live album. I got this bad boy at Gallery of Sound, nine dollars, double CD, good shit. Get you're making to- you're making me regret us not wanting to do this now. <laughs> it's <laughs> now, a great now album. I feel I should go get it. it. Is. <laughs> I, and, I'll, and I'll tell you what, um, with um, Priest Live, yeah, that's a nice <clears throat> sampler of their best stuff. But as far as performances, this kills. It kills. Yeah. I- Sorry, John, but I I just had to bring it up. And when I saw Jake and I'm like, okay, now I'm glad I brought it up. Um, I got got all mine. I went shopping with my friend's sister to um, Sam Goody shortly after. Yeah, Uh shortly after she. There's a story I haven't heard about in a long time. All of these shortly after. Um, But I think it's, is it Victim of Changes or Diamonds? One of the songs when he goes, We're going to do something for you. You hear a guy yell, blood red skies, blood red skies in the audience. Mm -hmm. Yep. Isn't that cool? It is. One of the best songs they never did live, too. (laughs) You want to hear more about blood red skies? Please watch our Ram It Down episode. (laughs) Bullet Train. Yes, it was nominated for a Grammy. I don't think it was good enough to win a Grammy. It is a cool tune, another cool beginning, another great pre-chorus in here, another driving riff. Really cool. Great performance by the band. And I'm going to repeat what Jake said, Cathedral Spires. That's the best song on the album, bar none. It's nine minutes, not a second wasted. That slow burn is fantastic. The riffs on here are fantastic. The chorus is awesome. It just springs you in. It's the only song on the album that would really suck you in, take you in. I think 
if we were to say, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but what was the best thing that Ripper brought to this band? It was Cathedral Spires. This is the best song Ripper does. I wish they do it live um, with KK's Priest. I don't think they do. Um, killer song. And then, yes, that ending, that outro is fantastic when they're repeating that chorus over and over. And then Ripper is going into like an operatic tone at the end. Wonderful. Wonderful. So... As a lot of you may know, I reviewed this album on The Contrarians. In fact, it was my topic. And I didn't watch the episode beforehand because I didn't want to repeat some. I probably repeated some of the same things, but I didn't want to watch it. I haven't watched it since it first aired. I do like this album more than, more now than I did then. And back then I gave it a six and now I'd give it a six and a half. So if you can get this, you know, at a decent price, it's worth checking out. You're not, as John indicated, you're not going to find this on Spotify Mm-mm. because SP's, SPV went bankrupt. So you can't, I, I looked today and it's not on there. Yeah. Um, but That's, yes, this deserves a little more love than it gets. Is it top notch priest? No, but it's good. And I can hear Rob singing a lot of these songs. So yes, it's, it's good. I mean, like, as I said, you know, um, and some some of you out there, some of your younger Judas Priest fans, you may appreciate it more than than I would. OK, thanks. Great stuff from both of you. Goodness gracious. How am I going to fill this? How am I going to finish this up? OK, well. All right. So I remember I remember getting this back in the day, back in real time. And I think just because of what was going on in my life at the time, I didn't get to spend the time with it. But I did remember hearing those like Jugulator and I don't know how far I actually got into the CD, but I didn't remember. It it didn't stay with me very long. I I know that much. I eventually had to get rid of a lot of stuff, but that was, you know, that was just because of what was going on in my life. So this is a very jarring album to listen to, really. You have Jews Priest doing a lot of different stuff that they hadn't done before. These guitars are tuned down at least a step and a half, if not two, you know, they're, they're, there's some heavy tuned down guitars here. Um, Of course you have, and I think one, one thing I think Glenn was saying, why didn't this album have, I have that kind of Judas Priest melody. Well, we weren't really feeling very melodious at the time. (laughs) I think it was something that Glenn was quoted as saying. So, um, so yes, you have the, you have the opening of Jugulator with that. Again, you can't. You, it, it's like you're back at the Black Country again with that at the steel mills, and you're hearing those chink it, chink it, chink it, chink it, chink it, chink it. You know, so you're hearing those those steel mill sounds, and and then you just you you just rip right into it. No no, no pun intended, but you just rip right into that heavy intro. Um, Something you're going to hear me say a lot uh, throughout this whole, again, I like to blanket things. I hear so many references to the big four on this album, which is very strange, Peter Jones, that you don't like a lot of those kind of bands, but yet you say you like, you say you like Jugulator, but man, this thing's loaded with those references. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. We love you anyway, Professor. So don't don't take that the wrong way. Anyway, um, there's I, there's like a almost like a Slayer like feel in that beginning of Jugulator. Then you get the you get into that that first intro with you get that you get those really distorted vocals. You know that was very prevalent at the time. It was you you'd hear a lot more of that throughout the rest of the '90s. But then again, but then then like verse one is almost kind of an anthrax kind of feel. And then you just get, uh, I'm just, as I'm reading all my notes here, this is like almost like painkiller's cousin at times. I just feel like there's a little bit of that, uh, but this very dystopian atmosphere, very, is it, is it as strong as painkiller? No, still not bad though. Uh, Bloodstained to me, 
I really could, I could almost, I don't know which one I could hear singing it, but I really could hear Anthrax playing this song and covering it. I don't know if John Bush would do a better version of it or if Joey would do a better version of it, or maybe um, both of them, <laughs> or maybe both of them. I don't know, but I could really hear Anthrax because that chicka chicka junk, chicka chicka junk, chicka chicka. To me, that sounds like something I could I could have almost heard off of Persistence of Time. That that really angry era of, of Anthrax, you know. To me, that's just kind of where I I got that from. You get a very it's a very war related song, like like John had already mentioned. Um, a lot of Lane Staley sound alike points in this album, you know, especially in like in that bridge. Um, again, don't know if that's intentional or not, but it just it's just what the times were but it's still a very good song one of the catchier songs the one one that's really stuck in my head um dead me with the dog with the dog growling kind of thing uh <laughs> another kind of anthrax kind of metallica like feel uh then you get kind of almost like a queen like you know sound in the chorus with the way the he the way ripper does the vocals i don't know just to me it sounded it sounded a little queen he, heavy queen like i guess um let's see uh again just kind of just that that whole spirit of resistance you know with just prevailing through all of that kind of kind of idea in the in the lyrics uh death row another song that kind of stuck with me i like uh a lot again kind of to me has an anthrax kind of a mega death feel i don't know why i say mega death but i kind of feel Maybe in maybe in maybe in some of how Ripper sings in some of these songs that he almost could it, it gives a little bit of a Mustaine kind of feel to it. I don't know. Um, again, I think it's just a dark look at our justice system and just you know feeling that weight of the decisions we make in our lives, whether it's why you wind up on death row or if you're saying time to execute, uh, whatever it is. But I felt like the cat it was a catchy chorus with a strong hook and. Uh, but yeah, that 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 when they when they do the electric chair sound, I to me that just sounded like something like out of a bad eighties horror movie. <laughs> I don't know. That's just, yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of what I got from that. Uh, decapitate. A uh, very slow, menacing, grinding track. Um, and I'm like, hey, I think I heard Ian playing. Mm -hmm. You know, and it wasn't just a bass. I actually heard like, ooh, he's actually tried a little bass solo there. Uh, so I was like, Ooh, okay, that's pretty cool. You get the cool little shoot sound effect, uh, throughout the song. Um, again, uh, not, not a bad song, nothing really memorable though, over, over wise, um, burn in hell to me as a standout track on this album. I, 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 I really do love this one. Um, but here's, here's the, here's the thing that I was picking up on when I started listening to this again. I'm listening to that little guitar line in the beginning that down, 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 and I'm like, where have I heard this? And I'm like, you. and I'm like, that's, that's Ozzy's vocal line from electric funeral. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, Hey, all right. I like that. Um, but yeah, that, that was just like, I could, I couldn't get, I couldn't hear this song and not hear electric funeral. So that was uh that was like pervading throughout my entire time. But um again, I can I could hear Rob singing this one. I think it's a great song. Um Brain Dead, again, you you guys have touched on the vocal uh, on the story behind the song. Uh again, I can almost hear anthrax doing this. It's kind of got that anthrax grind. Um a strong song. You know, the the one thing that this kind of remind another the the topic almost reminds me a little bit of um of of Metallica's one in a way because you have that whole Johnny got his gun idea mentality you know he's there but he can't do nothing other than you know Morse code with his head but I mean he can't he's got no arms no legs no everything else. And same with this person in this in this song. I mean, they're they're very they're giving a very dark description of what's in the song, and and I think we all have sympathy for folks who are trapped in that kind of existence, which is an it's unfortunate, but you know, it, unfortunately, it happens in this world. Um, but yeah, I think a, a, a strong, still a decent song. Um, 
<laughs> abductors. <laughs> uh, again, uh, uh, has that kind of that slow gripping, grinding alien abduction type of song, which there's all kinds of thoughts that you can take with that. Um, and then you had this nice little acoustic guitar entrance and like midway through the song, I'm like, oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. Okay, that's different. Um, I think there's points in the song where Ripper really soars uh, pretty well. There's some good stuff in here. Um, Bullet Train, uh, to me, a very Slayer-like uh, chugging opener to the song. Um, strong song. Uh, again, not, not much I can really add on to what you guys talked about. Uh, Cathedral Spires, epic closer, post-nuclear fallout. Love the 9-11 uh, reference, which I thought was uh, even better. Uh, uh, very much an Alice in Chains-like uh, groove throughout a lot of the song. Wonderful ending. You get that You get that church choir song like Jake mentioned. Great song. Um, would apps, would I, I, this would definitely be one I could, all, I would love to see Rob sing or even, or even, or even, um, Ripper doing with KK. I think that would be really, really good. But here again, I think maybe the reason he's not doing as much of that, I think he is, I think they are doing burn in hell, but they I, are. um, and so I'm, my guess is that maybe KK had more to do with burn in hell more so than cathedral spires i don't know i'm i'm just kind of guessing at that but uh, to me this was this is so much not a judas priest album <laughs> in some ways i mean yes it is a progression from from painkiller so i do i will give you that but if you're looking for a if you're still looking for some of the that judas priest's sound that those riffs those melody lines and the guitar lines you not really there. <laughs> it, it, this is just a totally different beast of its own kind. So I really will probably just give this a seven. That's how I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do with this. I can, I'm appreciate, I'm like John, I'm appreciating this a little bit more now. Um, as I've tried to get to listen to this and, and I'm trying to let it stand on its own merit, you know, instead of trying to, trying hard to compare it to painkiller to to point of or to point of entry or to hell bent or whatever let this stand on its own merit and see where it and see how it see how it goes and again i give it a seven i could kind of see why rob maybe won't ever sing any of these songs because some of the lyrical content is let's face it some of it's not really all that great <laughs> some of it's good maybe a little too dark but and i don't know if rob's really if that's where i don't think rob's place in his heart is really where is is in the darkness that this album has so maybe that's another reason he doesn't connect to it i don't know um if y'all are in the comments please please let me know what you think as to why you think rob won't sing any songs from jugulator and then the follow-up of demolition which we'll get into next week um anyway uh john what kind of tours did these guys uh did they do with this uh oh, right. and, by the, and by the way jake we didn't ask you this had you had a chance to see uh jews priest in concert at all yes and it was actually kind of most where i live is not a metal place we don't have metal concerts here but we got judas priest and queen drake on the what is it uh 50 heavy metal years five minutes from my house Oh, in, 2020, nice. yeah, in 2022 and my dad we were my dad and i went to omaha with my wife uh, for father's day and that's when they announced they were coming to where i live and dad says did you see this and i says yeah he's like we're going right and i says well i was gonna <laughs> request it off right now that's what i'm doing on my phone and he's like <laughs> oh good because i was gonna go and i was like he's like, he's like i was buying my ticket already <laughs> Nice. So uh, we went to see uh, Queensryche. I think that was our 10th time seeing Queensryche and uh, our first seeing Judas Priest. And Richie puts on a heck of a show. Richie is, for a guy that was a year after his heart incident, 
that like if you don't know his heart exploded on stage about a what was in 2021 something yes. like that yeah and he was running around that stage like he was running around a bit more than i run around and i'm 30 34 now he was running around like a 20 year old a madman on that stage hmm. um, but and rob still they played the sentinel which rob he had no problem hitting those high notes um but you brought up the the, the basement the one you put in the basement of the between the hammer and the anvil that was what they broke out off of Painkiller. And I remember thinking, of all the songs you would play off of Painkiller, you break out. But, but, I mean, I'm not complaining, but I would if you would have made me put money on what song was uh, played from Painkiller, I never would have said Between the Hammer and the Anvil. Interesting. So that was the one part we did not get to get from you in your point of entry if, if you had seen them live. So there you go. So. Right. So glad we got that in. So, all right. What kind of tour did they do for Jugular? Yeah, I saw that tour too. And um, I thought Priests were really good that night. Um, I was a little disappointed that Queensryche only got 40 minutes. Because to me, they're special guests. You got to give them an hour. Mm -hmm. That catalog, I mean, and I know they're, they're, hit, they're doing a lot of the stuff from the glory days, from the self-titled EP right through Empire, but that new stuff with Todd is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I, I only, my only regret, not regret, but my only wish was that they gave him, they gave them an hour instead of 40 minutes. Cause it was like, right when you're really getting into it, they're like, all right, thank you. Good night. Yeah, was, ah. mm -hmm. but, but, uh, yeah, that was a great tour. Jugular did nine, they did 92 dates. You're going to notice some things here. They started at actually is better if I I got a glare here because I think it's because I wear bifocals. So, but, <laughs> but I think that's where the glare comes from. But you're gonna notice something immediately. January 30th, they start the tour at the boathouse in Norfolk, Virginia. They're playing 930 Club in Washington, DC, Avalon, Boston, Massachusetts, Roseland Ballroom, New York, New York, Deckard Fa Factory in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They're playing smaller venues now because yep. at this time, cla um, the classic heavy metal sound is at its lowest point. So they're playing venues now that Wasp would also be playing at this time. So a lot of these venues you're going to hear, you heard on the Wasp series that we did. Met uh, Metropole in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, government in Toronto, Ontario. Canada, the Odeon in Cleveland, Ohio, Modesca Theater in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, The Rage, Vancouver, British Columbia. I had to say The Rage because The Rage is one of the great songs on British Steel. Fort did be San Diego, California. Uh, for these tours, um, the openers, a lot of times they didn't list them on Setlist FM, but Motorhead open for a few of these shows and they were pushing the snake bite love album and they went to europe they did a lot of shows in europe they played in germany switzerland austria slovakia prague poland poland they played the metal mania festival march 28 1998 also on that bill hammerfall lacuna coil therion morbid angel and vader it's time <laughs> while they were in europe they also played in denmark belgium netherlands england france portugal italy and spain then they went to japan and they played tokyo nagoya Fukuoka, and osaka mexico they played with megadeth megadeth would have been pushing cryptic writings i'm looking at that set list i think that had to be a co-headline because megadeth actually did a lot more songs and megadeth had they had shorter songs by that point. They didn't really have the, they weren't playing too many epics unless you consider Holy Wars an epic. Um, they they were play they were gear, gearing their songs towards radio at this point. So a lot of their songs were four minutes. And then they went back to the States and they played Rock and Rodeo in Denton, Texas, yeah. Galaxy Theater. That's right, Denton, Texas, home of the Von Erichs. Galaxy Theater, Santa Ana, California. 
uh, Ogden Theater, Denver, Colorado, Aerial Theater, Houston, Texas, Midnight Rodeo in Waco, Texas, Joe's Big Bamboo in Little Rock, Arkansas. I love that. Caravan of Dreams in Fort Worth, Texas, The Button South in Hallandale Beach, Florida, Masquerade in Atlanta, the Agora Theater, still kicking ass and taking names in Cleveland, Ohio, and Newport <laughs> Music Hall in Columbus, Ohio. Their last show on the tour was on Halloween. It was at the Hammerstein Ballroom, or the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City. And for support, a lot of these shows were done by Moondog Maine. I don't know who they are. Anyone out there knows who they are, please put it in the comments. And oh, for the tour, the songs played from Jugulator, which are also exhibited on 98 Metal Meltdown. That's right. Beginning of the tour, they were playing Bloodstain, Burn in Hell, Bullet Train, Death Row, and Abductors. As when the tour came back to the States, they were only playing Bullet Train and Burning Nail. They were playing a lot more traditional priests when they came back. So there you go. All right. So there you go. So not even not even the the the, the big epic. They didn't well, even do that. They didn't even play that back then. Interesting. Maybe it was the key. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was the key they played in. That's the only because I, I don't know if that's in a as low a key. Uh, Jake, would you maybe you'd know that? I, I don't know if um, Cathedral Spires, but I know most of these songs are in a, a much lower key. Like um, C and C sharp, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hence why Ian used the uh, five string, because that top string is a lot deeper and lower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Gotcha. Excellent. Wow. Well, there you go, folks. Um, I I don't I don't I don't know if we made this sound like uh, if we made this sound like insert your favorite ma- musical masterpiece uh like we did with ram it down but uh let us know what you think about this album you know this uh you know it's, it's uh like john was saying there's uh there's some clubs i recognize i hear i heard the 9 30 club I, i've i've never been there but i've seen it i've heard about it up in dc and the masquerade up in um atlanta that's that's not a big venue um i i have passed by that uh the electric factory i was supposed to see wasp and motorhead there yeah that's not a very big place so right yeah so uh yeah they were playing much smaller places so you can you imagine getting a chance to see judas priest granted one with halford but judas priest in a in an intimate type of venue like that that would be awesome that would have been pretty darn cool they had but, a lot of uh, like Dio was playing similar venues at that time too. They were yeah, well all those. You know, it's like you Ronnie said, all James those Dio in a club, you know, back then. Of course, granted, he's not going to have the the. You're not going to get the the immense stage show. Right. Oh, and, and, and Maiden was doing the same thing, you know. Mm-hmm. But but they had Blaze, so mm-hmm. Maiden was playing a lot of those smaller venues, but they didn't have the probably the stage set up like World Slavery Tour or something like that. But right. Uh, so, all right. Well, uh, you're going to get Jake next week. Uh, we're going to discuss, uh, we will discuss demolition. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to talk about that next week. And uh, um, let's see John's series with uh, Tim Durling on the, uh, on the uh, uh, Tim's vinyl confessions on Y and T is winding down. Uh, we got a, what, a couple more episodes, and then I think that's done, too. Yes, two more. Yes, Two more. Um, and as we've been plugging all the different books, uh, you got the Thin Lizzy. Let's see. Mart- Martin should be paying us for some of these. Uh, I know. Yes. <laughs> so uh, John's Martin, in this one. Right. I'm in, I'm in, of course, the picture's 11. He, uh, John's in this one for Thin Lizzy, for the Thin Lizzy fan. Of course, the Blue Oyster Cult, because, you know, Ghost Stories just came out uh, with that to kind of uh, look back at some of the some rare tracks, I guess. Right. Um, I've heard some differing views on that. Of course, don't forget the Y&T book that John's in with Tim Durling. Um, yeah, got to got to plug all the books. You know, got to do that because, uh, like I said, uh, you know, that's contrarian. This is where we all is where John and I first met. So uh, that's yep. uh you know, and, and now we got you and we hooked uh, Jake into it too. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's lots of different programs that you can catch John on. 
Um, I, there's not much really with me right now. Uh, just mainly just doing this right now. Um, just waiting on, um, waiting on the, the episode that, uh, I did with Peter Kerr and Mike Ladano and Steve Deluxe on the album from, uh, the band Tough. Uh, this was kind of our, uh, nod to the decline of the Western civilization metal years, uh, metal sludge guys who, you know, ganged up on us a little bit on that, <laughs> on that video. Um, but we review the, the album Tough by Stevie Rochelle, you know, Stevie Rochelle and his band. So uh, uh don't know when that one's coming out, uh, hopefully soon. Um, yeah, other than that, that's just, we're out there. There's a gazillion channels that I link in the uh, description. So please feel free to check all those out. There's a lot of awesome content by everybody. You know, you, you can, if you got the time, you got the content to go check out plenty oh. of it out there so so for our good friend jake not from state farm thank you jake. We, we will Please. see you again next week thank you for yes. joining us again for my good friend uh the co-captain on this journey uh we call it the year of the priest john the music nut john clauser johnny metal the metal dad saying rock forever demolitions coming next week we'll see you soon <laughs>